Hello. Um, so today I'll be doing a comparative study. Um, I'll be using The Fruit of My Woman by Han King and The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Peck and Gilman as relevant case studies to explore um, the author's uh, sort of presentation of resistance against gendered domestic roles through the idea of becoming and transformation. So first I'm going to outline the reasons why I have chosen the two texts for this discussion. I will then introduce Judith Butler's notion on the construction of gender and gendered roles. Then looking at the texts, I will offer ways in which these domestic gendered roles are imposed on the main female characters in both texts. Next, I will link Butler's idea with Deleuze and Guattari's concept of molar or lines of rigid segmentarity and their notion of becoming. I will suggest the texts transform the female bodies in order to resist and escape from gendered roles. This transformation can be seen in terms of Deleuze and Guattari's becoming. While there are also differences in both texts, such as the fact that Fruit of My Woman is a Korean text narrated partly by the husband, and The Yellow Wallpaper is an American text told entirely from the woman's point of view, I have chosen to do a comparative study on The Fruit of My Woman and The Yellow Wallpaper because the two texts can be seen to deal with similar themes. The female characters in both texts are women trapped in gendered domestic spaces because of their marriages. Both women desire to escape the roles that are expected of them in these domestic spaces. Ultimately, the negligence from their husbands results in the women's bodily transformations and to use Deleuze and Guattari's words, their becoming. So, I aim to argue that these feminist texts write against notions of gendered domesticity through the transformation of their bodies. This concept of becoming as a form of resistance against rigid lines of segmentarity. Judith Butler is well known for her assertion of gender as a construct, saying that the various acts of gender create the idea of gender, and without those acts there would be no gender at all. Gender is thus a construction and regularly conceals its genesis. Indeed, as such, we can link the body directly to these constructs of gender. In Butler's text, Gender Trouble, she says the moment in which an infant becomes humanized is when the question, is it a boy or girl, is answered. This suggests that the moment one is born, they are perceived and treated based on their anatomy. The body becomes instilled with ideas of gender and others treat the body based on these constructed gendered notions. Because of the gendered way in which the infant is and will be treated, based off of its anatomy, in turn determines, to use Butler's words, the expressions of gender performed by the infant as it matures. Therefore, we may take the body itself as determined along Deleuze and Gautari's molar or rigid lines of segmentary. In The Fruit of My Woman, we see that as a result of the woman's gendered body, she is expected to fulfil certain expressions. As a wife, she is expected by her husband and society to fulfil her female marital duties. Indeed, we can see this in this quote from the text. But in the end, instead of setting out for the world's edge, my wife poured all her meagre funds into the deposit for this flat and our wedding costs. She'd explain this to me all in a single short sentence, saying she'd done it because it's not like I can part from you. This line in particular, it's not like I can part from you, suggests a sense of duty, or rather obligation. This idea of duty is further emphasised when after the husband arrives home from a business trip and finds the apartment uncharacteristically dirty and messy. Instead of considering why the apartment may be in this state, he is kind of accusatory and asks, is this any way to run a household? So we can see that the narrator kind of assumes, or rather imposes, this kind of gendered domestic obligation onto his wife. Furthermore, the woman longs to leave the apartment, saying... It's impossible to live in this stifling place. There's no way anything could grow here. Don't you see? Not trapped in this, in this stifling, deafening place. The apartment many floors away from the ground and earth and the bad air and water reflects her entrapment, entrapment by this domestic life. So, similarly for the yellow wallpaper, the female protagonist is imbued by her husband and society with gendered expectations. I think that the baby is certainly a symbol of this 19th century expectation of women as mother and wives. Especially if we think of her body as being the vehicle in which to produce children. So this societal expectation of mother is entwined with her anatomy. 
Indeed, many critics have inferred that Charlotte Perkins Gilman uses the text to discuss postpartum depression, so that kind of directly relates to ideas of expectations of motherhood. So the protagonist is confined by societal norms, but she is also physically confined by the domestic. John, her husband, declines her from leaving the room or visiting friends or family. She is trapped in the house, which kind of suggests her entrapment by domestic life. This is symbolised by the fact of the room and the wallpaper, like prison bars. She says, worst of all, by moonlight it becomes bars. And then she also says, she just takes hold of the bars and shakes them hard. So we can see that what Butler defines as constructions of gender confine and entrap the female protagonists in both texts. They are confined by the categories prescribed to them because of their gendered bodies, i.e. mother and wife. In order to resist these limiting constructions, the characters are seen to transform their bodies. Indeed, Deleuze and Guattari suggest that their notion of becoming is as a resistance or means of escape from the molar or rigid lines of segmentarity. In The Fruit of My Woman, the female protagonist transforms her own body, becoming tree. She longs to escape from the stifling apartment, and in order to do so, she must transform the thing which anchors her to this domestic space. This thing is her gendered body. It is rooted in the domestic space of the apartment because of socially constructed notions of female, which claim women as wife and imbues them with certain marital expectations. In order to resist these expectations, which root her in the domestic space, she must escape or transform her gendered body. In becoming tree, she removes herself from the rigid and violent lines of segmentarity. In the yellow wallpaper, the protagonist similarly removes herself from her gendered body in order to resist societal expectations. In order to remove herself from her gendered body, the narrator obsesses with the wallpaper. As Priti Puri and Shafali put in their article, the protagonist's obsessive behaviour is not a sign of deepening madness, but rather a sign of becoming. She is seen to become one with the wallpaper. The boundaries between her and the woman in the wallpaper blur. She removes herself from her gendered body by becoming socially unacceptable or becoming insane. Again, as Puri and Shafali note, madness is seen as a kind of transcendent sanity. Indeed, in the protagonist's becoming insane, she does in fact succeed in removing herself from the gendered domestic expectations entwined with her body. She no longer carries out her domestic chores. This is done by Jenny, and Mary takes, care, takes on the protagonist's motherly duties by looking after the baby. Like the fruit of my woman, in the yellow wallpaper, in the protagonist's becoming, she removes herself from her gendered body, as it is the thing which anchors her to her gendered domestic roles or expectations. Therefore, on the last page, when she says, I've got out at last, said I, in spite of you and Jane, we might infer that she is talking directly to you, being her husband and by implication, social expectations. And Jane, her body, which had anchored her in these constructions of gender. So, for this comparative study, I used the fruit of my woman and the yellow wallpaper, because within these two texts we can see a writing against notions of gendered domesticity through the transformation of the female body. The reason why it is their bodies which are transformed can be under understood through Judith Butler, who theorises that the construction of gender is projected onto one's anatomy, and part of this construction of gender are the gendered expectations. In The Fruit of My Woman, we see this through the female character's wifely duties. She gives up her dream for a wedding and a flat she doesn't really want, out of obligation. She says, it's not like I can part from you. In the yellow wallpaper, the symbol of the bike the baby demonstrates the protagonist's expectations to be a mother, and then the wallpaper and the room itself shows how she's trapped in this domestic space. So in order for both women to resist these gendered expectations, they transform, or rather remove themselves, from these gendered bodies. As Deleuze and Gautari suggest, this transformation, or becoming, is as a resistance or means of, of escape from the molar or rigid lines of segmentarity. In The Fruit of My Woman, this is by becoming tree, while in The Yellow Wallpaper, this is by becoming insane. Indeed, both women are seen to be successful in their becomings, 
in The Fruit of My Woman, the husband takes on the previously wifely role of nurturer and carer, while in The Yellow Wallpaper, the protagonist's wifely and motherly duties are taken on by other women. So by comparing these two text, texts using Butler and Deleuze's theories, it has been shown the extent to which the body and transformation of the body is relevant to these feminist discourses of escaping gendered roles. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.